Hello, everybody. This is Bob Coppage, CEO of Simplex IT, and I am joined because we have to actually be accurate with this. So I'm joined with, uh, by Adam Evans, who's the security director here at Simplex IT. Adam, how are you doing? I'm doing good, Bob. How are you? I'm peachy. And of course, we've been talking prior to us recording this for about 20 minutes, but we still have to go through the obligatory we care about each other moment. Oh, of course. Yeah. Anyway, so as you pointed out uh, <laughs> very verbally over the last 24 hours or so, there's a significant new security issue coming out and we want to let everybody know what's going on from a, not from a high level security standpoint, but more for the uh, both management and CEOs of SMBs and IT people in small, medium businesses could understand. And of course, we wanted to give this a good name that's well understood, and we chose CVE 2023-5129, right? Yeah, because that's not a mouthful or anything. No, that's good. So what's going on here? So um, this is an interesting vulnerability with a specific little bit of software out there called LibWebP. That's because, you know, easy lovely names right um the thing that's fun with this one is software developers when they build out programs they like to reuse code and programs and all their bits of stuff because well it's easier and cheaper right um there was a vulnerability found with one of those where a malicious entity could craft a specially malicious little web file that if you go to it and you see it they can run remote code on your device with this whole thing of a heat buffer overflow vulnerability, which we can dive into the fun fun around no, that one, but no, we can't. We talked about this. Okay. No diving. Okay. But but, but I mean the bottom line is <laughs> it's a vulnerability that's been discovered within the last like 24, 48 hours. Is that right? It's it's a little more complicated than that, but the big impact really started to pop up in the last, you know, 48 hours or so. Okay. Um, it and was, it's not just one application. Right. Um, the, the main vulnerability here where it initially came out is, and, and got everyone's attention, it was originally listed as a vulnerability within Google Chrome. Right. But then security researchers realized that a whole bunch of other stuff uses that library as well, um, from Microsoft Edge to Mozilla Firefox, Opera, Teams, Discord, like all kinds of different applications use this. Yeah. And... Yeah. And that's being a heat buffer overflow, that's something that essentially bad guys can do what they want to. More or less. It, it's that entry point. Um, right. You know, when they do this kind of attack and exploit, they're able to run code in places that they're not supposed to be able to do that and run whatever kind of code they want, basically. Okay. Um, so so that's, that's what it really boils down to. Um, is, yeah, when you go to that that overflow will start writing code where it shouldn't write and that code can be anything from just nonsense to your remote access malware so so this is basically it's a vulnerability that a hits almost every browser or potentially hits almost every browser that we're using regardless of device or the like plus it can hit a bunch of other applications because this one main library program library is used by both applications and almost all browsers right and if the bad guys are able to use this vulnerability, they can pretty much do anything, take over your system, data theft, malware, disco, whatever. Yeah, the, the disco attack would be very interesting. I don't think we've seen that as a security profession yet. And, and you know, half of the people are wondering, what what does this acronym stand for? No, I am talking about <laughs> disco, the music style. I will always lead the fight to, to keep from bringing that back. So, and we've also got a link here, which is a good explanation of the issue. I just want to advise people that this is being recorded on Thursday, the 28th. Um, and this is, stuff is happening even as we speak, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, yesterday throughout the day, um, you know, the community has been hard at work working on this. Security researchers have been working on this. Um, security vendors have been working on their appropriate next steps, detection mechanisms, et cetera. Yeah. I was even on a call with one of our, our security partners at the time and uh, it made a comment of, oh, this is probably why I'm having a hard time getting a hold of our threat hunting teams. Well, that's both good and bad, right? <laughs> yes, it means, you know, when talking about it and what comes with this is, you know, this is in looking at how this, this specific vulnerability can be used in the whole cyber attack chain. This is the way that the bad guys can start getting in. Right. So those, those threat hunters out there are looking for those indications that someone's using this to get into the environments absolutely so 
Cool. So we, we know what the issue is, relatively speaking, and we know uh, what is affected, very relatively speaking. So now what do we do about it? And that brings up our next slide. And really yep. patching, right? Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I know it's it's almost like beating a dead horse here, but you hear security professionals all the time saying, patch your stuff, keep your stuff up to date, enable automatic updates, and, and do that. This is an instance where this vulnerability is in the instance of most of the web browsers has already been patched. Um, Google, Microsoft, Mozilla released their updates over a week ago. Um, other pro applications are working on their updates as we speak. Some may have pushed, some may still be working on it. And depending on the developer, some may be finding out they're vulnerable while we're saying this. Right. Um, but the moral of the story is as those updates come out, as those patches get released, get them installed. So for, for an organization that has been following a relatively good pattern and good practice of patching things, they're probably going to be okay mm -hmm. uh, with the exception of third-party apps that haven't updated yet or right. that don't lend themselves to a good automated process. Uh, whereas an organization that hasn't been patching is not doing a good job, especially not using an automated patching or whatever, they've got more of a vulnerability, but quite honestly, they probably got a lot more vulnerability than they're thinking anyway, right? Right, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and also just keeping in mind is you're trying to reduce that risk and reduce that attack surface. So we can look at things like web browsers where you know every, every end user in a company is going to have a web browser in their computer. So you can focus your efforts there. Maybe there's an application that's vulnerable that's installed on one or two computers, but it's some weird one-off software that's you know not very widely known. Yeah. They may still be working on the patch, but you're you're lowering or you're raising that barrier for entry for the bad guys. Right. They've got to know that you have that app that weird application, those one-offs, and they have to know how to target that versus just a web browser. Cool. Right. So there. So the bad guys are more likely to to release something that's going to take advantage of the stuff that they're more likely to have success with, which would be mm -hmm. browsers. Yeah. Okay. So then we got the folks who, who are basically going, you know, I, I've got antivirus. I haven't got the latest antivirus. I've got, I don't even know what these letters stand for, but I've got EDR, I've got MDR, I've got all of this. And yet here you are telling me that I've got to do other things in order to get protected. What, what do you say to those folks? It's, you know, I like thinking of it like, you know, just driving your car. We all have seatbelts, we all have airbags, but you shouldn't treat your morning commute to the office like a demolition derby. So, I should not. Agreed, you should not. For the sake oh. of everyone else on the road, please do not do that. As, <laughs> as fun as it might be, um, 480 is not a drag strip. <laughs> Especially during rush hour. So, so bottom line though is, is is that everything is layers, right? Well, whenever we talk about yeah. security strategies, yeah, it's, and it gets into that whole idea of, of what's called right of boom and left of boom. Um, boom being your security incident, you get hacked. You don't want to get to that that incident. You want to put enough layers of protection in place to keep that from happening, so you don't have to use your response capabilities from like managed detection and response platforms. You want to prevent the bad guys from getting to that point. Antivirus, EDR, MDR, insert whatever acronyms here are great at detecting incidents as they're going on and, you know, usually doing some kind of containment and alerting around it. But if that's happening, the bad guys have already gotten that far into your environment. Right. And really, a, a, a simpler way from my perspective is if something is 90% effective, that sounds great, but that means 10% is getting through. If you've got two layers that are each 90% effective, but in different ways, your effective protection rate is now closer to 90, 98%. Yep, and when you look at the the threat landscape and what the bad guys are doing, they're out there nine times out of 10 to make some money. Right. Usually ransomware scams, et cetera. So the more layers you can put in place to make it harder for them to make their money, they're losing their return on investment. They're going to give up and move on to the next company. Even if you look at your security and you go, you know, on a scale of one to 10, we rate our security a six. That can still be difficult for the bad guys to get in and the bad guys may look at that and go you know what it's not worth it we're going to find the company that's a three or a two well and that's it, it, it that gets back to the you know the the two friends running running away from a bear and the one friend looking at the other and going dude we're never going to outrun the bear and the guy looking in again i don't have to outrun the bear i have to outrun you exactly so 
Cool. So I think this is this is really good information, but I want to bring it back to the Simplex IT folks. Uh, so our Simplex IT clients, who we've actually all by the time this this video goes out, we've already emailed them what we're doing. But just to reiterate, um, can you walk walk me through what this is? Yeah. So um, when the news of this broke yesterday morning, and we started uh, you know understanding what was going on, took a quick look over our client environment to determine impact. Um, that led us to developing some improved third-party patch, third-party patching policies, which we did yesterday. We start we rolled those out internally to ourselves yesterday to make sure that they're not going to you know upend the world and cause a whole bunch of interruptions and issues with our clients because it's always balancing security plus productivity, right? Yep. Um, and those passed their tests, so we're moving forward to full client deployment by end of day today on the twenty eighth. Cool. Um, so, yeah, go ahead, Bob. No, I was just I was just going to say so. So bottom line, we've discovered it. We already had processes in place. Uh, we improved them as far as third party stuff to make sure that it includes this stuff, tested it on ourselves and then deployed to all of our clients, all of our clients that have patching as part of the services, uh, which is the majority of our managed and co-managed clients. Uh, so within 36 hours, really even closer to 24, uh, we had our solution in place. Yeah, and I mean, there's one thing to note here is this, uh, you know, doesn't include every third party application. Um, right. You know, looking over from the industry, there's about 800 applications right now that the industry as a whole is trying to evaluate and figure out the level of impact, et cetera. But some of these, you know, application developers haven't released a patch yet. Um, and of course, looking at the complexity around how we deploy some of those too. Um, things like a web browser update or an update to like Teams or Slack or something like that's pretty straightforward to do from, from an IT perspective. But if those applications are much more complex, much more difficult to update, maybe they have weird other dependencies and whatnot, those may need a different approach. Right. But for right now, we wanted to look over our, our client impact that attack surface and, and take reasonable measures to protect our clients, You know, make it harder for that return on investment for the bad guys and move the needle in a positive way. And that was our objectives. Cool, as it always is. Yep. All right, so hopefully that has given everybody here a, enough information on this. However, if you need more information, especially if you're not sure whether your organization is protected, and I say this both to uh, management of organizations as well as if you're the internal IT person, because sometimes you're also expected to be the security guru or God, and I can tell you, Adam is, I mean, that's his focus. He mm -hmm. gets to do that all the time. If you're, you know, it's a small one or two person IT shop, you don't have that kind of luxury. Uh, mm -hmm. Plus you probably don't have the kind of mentality that Adam does. And I think that's a good, uh, anyway, so. We'll, we'll anyway. leave a decision on that one to the therapists. <laughs> but contact us at simplex-it.com slash contact dash us or email me at bobc at simplex-it.com. And you can also check out our learning center uh, where we have a couple hundred videos on this topic and other topics. Uh, and we, again, we've already emailed clients with this info uh, and the like. Adam, any more thoughts? Not really, I think we said it all already. Cool. Anywho, uh, leave some comments. If you've got some other sites that have good explanations of this uh, situation, uh, leave them in comments so that everybody else can see it. And don't forget to you know, like and subscribe and all that because otherwise Disco may make a comeback and none of us want that. See you later. Yep, see ya.